Hello, I'm Penelope Maver and welcome to Earth Converse podcast, an exploration into our relationship and conversations with the earth, all in the hope of inspiring a deeper connection with ourselves, each other and the earth that is our home. In episode one, I briefly mentioned the concept of taking it to the land, the idea of asking questions and seeking answers through nature's wisdom, that our universe is our mirror. I'll expand on this a little more here, including how we can develop our ability to do that. And for sure, it will be a central theme on the Earth Converse podcast. And in offering my thoughts, I invite you to reflect on yours. Every so often, I will follow a particular reflection point with the forest sound. So pause at that point or not, it's up to you. So from Rilke's Book of Hours, if we surrendered to Earth's intelligence, we could rise up rooted like trees. How beautiful is it to turn to the non-human world for inspiration, connection and belonging? So at this point, I invite you to reflect on the moments you've done exactly that, where you've turned to the non-human world for inspiration, connection and belonging. And I guess the progression for me is this conscious practice of taking it to the land an invitation I learnt through rites of passage work. It is the ancient human practice of going out to nature to seek inspiration, connection and belonging, to reset and resource ourselves, to evolve. When we take it to the land, we go into nature and consciously engage with its mystery. Whether it be a dilemma we are facing, or the dreams we want to manifest, the answers we seek can all be aided by a conversation with Mother Earth. Rocks, trees, ants, birds, the moon and the stars, the natural world is full of good listeners and sage wisdom. Going to the deserts, the mountains, the seas, the forest and the plains to seek connection to ourselves, others and the earth is a fundamental part of our human story. And again, it's a spectrum Children and indigenous people seem to do this naturally. There seems to be no boundary between beings and non-beings in their relationships and conversations. Some people may have spent their life working on the land or studying the natural world or have had a lifetime adventuring in the outdoors, feeling connected, but may still have never engaged with nature in this way, at least consciously. Some are more than happy to talk to their pets, but may feel strange talking to other non-humans and non-beings. Even those who may find it all weird, well, perhaps too, they have found themselves doing it at some point. I mean, who hasn't looked up to the sky looking for answers? So we're on this spectrum of where many of us feel separate. We've become disconnected with this part of ourselves and therefore the outer world. We do not engage in the natural world in an interactive way. And we don't know how to converse with our own inner voice, the the voice through which the natural world speaks to us. However, if we can reconnect with our own voice and turn up to nature, fully present with an open mind and heart, we have an opportunity to feel the benefits of interconnectedness. If we're prepared to pay attention to what is revealed to us by nature, signs and symbols of our inner journey will be reflected back to us. So we go out with an intention, a question, an idea, and we notice what happens. The raven that circles us, the scar in the tree trunk, the rotten carcass, the busy bees, the breeze that whispers, Nature is always a mirror to our soul, if we're prepared to look. Two little stories uh, from me at this point. I was in the New Mexico desert on a vision quest, and I was questioning my gifts. And I met a tarantula during that time, and I sat down with it. 
And in retelling the story to the guides about that time, they beautifully reflected back that of course it was fitting that a Penelope meets a tarantula. The Greek weaver, the roots of my name, meets the ultimate weaver, the spider. So it helped me think about the gifts of uh, weaving ideas, people and concepts, which has been useful for my work and my life. And in Colorado, I was met by a hummingbird. I had the vision of being intimately expansive in my relationships, including with the world. And as if to reinforce how important that was to me, I came eye to eye with a hummingbird. And it hovered, looked straight at me, and furiously flapped its little wings. And of course, I felt its confirmation. And beautifully, this continued as I was visited by many hummingbirds during that time. So having listened to this, what encounters from the natural world have been particularly meaningful for you? To start, you may just want to think that they like conversations with people. Many share a similar fate when I say our dad died uh, suddenly from a heart attack and that we never got to say goodbye. What works for me is to take it to the land where I have those missed or missing conversations. Instead of dad, I talk to a rock, which makes me smile as dad was indeed a man of few words. You know, those ancestors we never will meet, the family member we miss, or the lover that goes without a goodbye, the colleague that drives us crazy, the distant friend, those industrialists and politicians we get angry with, the natural world, non-beings and beings alike will help us with those conversations. We can have any conversation we need to without the person in question being there. We can have them with the universe at large. Arguably, what pet has not been the perfect stand-in? As Stephen Foster and Meredith Little wrote, if you're not already convinced of this, Put it to the test. Ask the wind a question about your own destiny. If you hold your attention steadily on the subject, the wind will answer. Then you must be willing to accept the answer, even if it seems inconsequential or what I already know. They also go on the exercise of intuitive cognition, one of humankind's greatest gifts, begins with the exercise of respecting and listening to our inner voice. If we cannot value our own inherent wisdom, the bird and the moon will have nothing to reveal to us. So we return to that theme of the outer and inner world connection. That connection with the world and others starts with ourselves, so we learn to listen to our own inner voice. That is the quintessential human journey, is it not? That coming home to ourselves, the journey of awareness. And I'd like to ask you to reflect on how connected do you feel with your inner voice and your intuition? Several years ago, I did some research on intuition and one of the findings is that the more calm, centered, and confident state we're in, the better chance of listening to our intuition. And I'm sure that resonates with your experience. You know, when we're in a mindful state, we're aware and non-judgmental. We can notice those physical sensations that are, arise in our body and are more likely to trust their messages about what to do. And one way to help us into this calm, centered, and confident state is through meditation. I know for me how my meditation practice has helped me tune my intuition. And it has helped me be more mindful to be aware and equanimous with whatever arises. You know, to be able to be present or notice when I'm not and therefore reset easier and quicker helps me see more clearly and be more compassionate to myself, others in the world. It has made me more attentive and is quiet in my mind so I can hear my heart and my inner voice. 
And I wonder what your experience is with meditation and what this has meant for your connection with yourself and nature. For those with a meditation practice, keep going. For those who have thought it would be a good thing to start but haven't started, well, you can start anytime. You can start here. In many respects, it is the perfect timing to learn to meditate or to be motivated to continue, given that we're in this global pause in this situation. And it's a reminder that although our physical freedom may be restricted, our real freedom is in our hearts and minds. And the paradox is also that it may be even harder to meditate, where our minds may be busier than ever in a state of anxiety for what is and what may come. The boundaries of private and professional life are now blurred in a virtual reality, with homes possibly feeling overcrowded or lonely, and therefore hostile to a meditation practice. Let's face it, in any time it takes some courage and discipline to get into a meditation practice and sustain it. You know, to get on the meditation cushion, to physically stop is one thing, to consciously observe ourselves and sit with the thoughts and emotions that arise, well, that takes some work. You know, generally, it is difficult. Our minds are pretty unruly. That's the whole point of meditation, to learn to train our minds for we are in more in control of them than we think. You know, so we, if we are aware and compassionate with ourselves and patient and persistent, we can train our minds. If you can breathe, you can meditate. It may be that we just start at this point. And take a breath. Just start with one conscious breath. And then a couple more. Maybe you want to try that right now. So I'm aware that there are different types of meditation and different techniques work for different people. For me, generally, it comes down to two types, concentration meditation and insight meditation. I like to offer both in the meditation classes I run and when I work with leaders. Concentration and meditation, we calm our mind through focused attention. In practice, we fix our attention on a single object to help the mind deepen and steady attention. So that object may be a breath, a visualization, a part of the body, or an external object. Insight meditation, sometimes referred to as awareness or mindfulness meditation, uses a different approach with the aim of cultivating wisdom through observing and accepting change. Instead of keeping the mind fixed on one thing exclusively, we observe objects as they appear and pass away with an equanimous, non-judgmental mind. It might be the sensations in her body or the sensations around us, for example. One form of meditation is not necessarily better than the other. It depends on your objective. But traditionally, concentration meditation is taught first in order to help us quiet and steady our minds. Crucial if we want to access our inner voice and listen deeply to the sage wisdom of the earth. I will offer a 10-minute concentration practice here now. In other podcasts, I will offer insight meditations, including ones with nature. So if you're keen for a 10-minute meditation, you can find a quiet spot, get a cushion, a chair, whatever you need. comfortable either on a cushion on a chair maybe you're wanting to lie down but whatever posture that makes your body feel relaxed at ease but also dignified and I'm going to set the timer with bowels and I will give some guidance throughout you may want to close your eyes to help with the concentration So just 
just arriving and settling. You may want to take a few exaggerated big breaths to bring you into the moment, get your mind ready for some work. So a big inhale and a slow exhale. Letting go and exhale. A few more. Big inhale. Slow exhale. And bring your attention to your body as it comes into the stillness. Take a moment to scan your body from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. See what's want, what wants to relax and notice any areas of tension and, and breathe into them. And now I would like you to focus your attention just on your breath. The miracle that is your breath. The miracle that you're breathing. And choose where you want to focus your breath, where it feels most, most alive or prominent. The narrower the space, the greater the potential for concentration. So if you can, if you can focus in on the in and out of your nostrils, that will help focus even more. Otherwise, your belly or wherever you, wherever you choose, you whatever, feel, whatever feels right for you, just choose and stay with it. Your natural breath. And over this time, you're just going to follow that, your natural breath, in the same spot. It's going to be your object of attention. It will be natural for your mind to wander. When you notice it doing that, just gently bring it back to your breath, to focus on your breath, your natural breath. You as a natural breathing being. There's no need to get complicated with their meditation. They've got a pre-installed tool, <laughs> their breath. Brought us into this life. Keeps us alive. It's automatic and sacred. Just stay with your natural breath. Your mind may wander a thousand times, a thousand times, bring it back.
loving attention to the miracle that's your breath. Stay connected with it. Just follow it. Soon as you wander and notice you are, just bring it back. The focus of your attention on the miracle that is your breath. Just follow it. Your natural breath. Your Honouring each breath, in and out, in and out. Steady attention. Loving attention. Compassionate. Attention. Economist. Attention. Just follow it. Your natural breath. Your natural breath. Simple and profound. Thank you. And I just want uh, you to take some moments to reflect on how that experience was for you.
So we've done a little exploration of taking things to the land in a way to cultivate, cultivate a mind and heart set to do that, honing our intuitive cognition a little. So I'll pause here and see you back for the next Earth Converse podcast. Let us know what you think and what you need so these podcasts can be helpful and meaningful for you. In the meantime, enjoy Earth one conversation at a time.